What's up everyone, this video will be all about how I edit my raw images. This means I'm explaining the whole process from choosing the software in which I want to edit in, going through all the steps from basic adjustments, local adjustments to color grading and finally Photoshop adjustments. And with those editing steps, turning this boring landscape image into something more beautiful. So let's jump into it. Of course, the very first step is to choose the right software. For me, it's always the question, am I just editing one single image or do I have to work on a lot of shots? If I'm just using one shot, I'm always going to use Photoshop. It's way faster and of course I do have all the same raw adjustments I have in Lightroom. However, if there are a lot of images to work on, for example when coming back from a trip, it makes much more sense to use Lightroom because then you are way faster editing multiple images and you can just organize your images better. For this video I do have one image to edit, so I'm going to use Photoshop, that means I'm going to do the raw adjustments first in the camera raw editor. After opening the raw image, I'm usually heading into the optics tab and then I want to remove chromatic aberration and sometimes I also use the profile corrections. In this case, I don't think it's that helpful since it's a panoramic image, so I'm going to not check this option. However, I do want to crop this image because at the moment it looks very, very strange and unbalanced, so let's change that. Once I frame the subject nicely, I can start working on the basic stuff. That means I'm going to change the profile and depending on what I want for the landscape, I'm choosing a different profile. For example, if I would aim for more saturated colors, I would just go with Adobe Landscape. In this case, it looks a bit too much, so I'm just going with Adobe Standard. This gives me a more flat image to work with, and to do that, I'm going through the basic tab first. Depending on how well exposed the image is, and if I can see things or not, I'm going to change the white balance first. For now, the light saturation is quite okay, so I'm going to adjust the temperature. I do want to have a warmer image, so I'm going to bring up the temperature and just give it more sunset like color tones. If you have problems adjusting the white balance, you can turn up the vibrance and the saturation all the way. And now you can clearly see which colors are more dominant. In this case, the clouds are yellow while the sky stays blue, which is pretty much what I want. But I could turn up the temperature a little more maybe. Also, you can see a slight green color cast just down there in the left corner. That means we can fix that by bringing up the tint. Once I'm done with the white balance settings, I'm going to set back vibrance and saturation. Then let me get the exposure right. I usually try to not have too much over or under exposure in the image, but if there is some overexposure or even underexposure, I think that's okay, but of course that's just a personal thing. In this case, I do want to make this shot a little darker, so let's first bring down the exposure. So I'm not going to lose too much details in those shadows, but the highlights look pretty nice this way. Then I'm going to drop the highlights very, very slightly as well. And at this point it might start to look a bit too dark, so let's bring up the shadows. And maybe even the blacks. Looking at the histogram in the upper right corner, you can see there is no underexposure anymore and also the overexposure is fixed as well. However, the contrast is still a little bit lacking for this image, but we can fix that at the later point. After those exposure adjustments, I usually go through the effects down here. I want to have a sharp image, so let me bring up the texture. We could also play around with clarity, of course. However, be very careful with those two sliders because they are easily overdone. Let's also bring up the dehaze, which actually will help us introduce some more contrast to this shot. So this is looking pretty good. Also, it makes the whole thing a lot clearer. Again, this is a pretty heavy slider, so be careful. Finally, we have the vibrance and the saturation. Depending on the image, I'd like to go really crazy here, but in this case, I just want to push the vibrance a little bit. So here we are done with the base adjustments. You can see we adjusted the exposure very nicely. Also, we have a lot better color theme for this image. Makes it look way more like a sunset. 
However, the contrast might need some finer tuning and I also want to add some kind of special effects like low or a darker sky. This is done with local adjustments, which is the next step for my editing process. Here, usually I start working on the sky first. So let me create a radial gradient real quick. And I do want to add a little bit of glow up there in the sky. And with those radial filters and the glow effect, I usually just turn up the blacks to make the glow effect stronger. I can also turn down the dehaze. Again, just be prepared for overexposure. And to give it a little color, I can turn up the temperature. And if that is not enough, I can use this little box right here to add some more specific color tone. So let's just go with something in the yellow range, bring up the saturation. Perfect. For the sky, thankfully, Adobe has added the sky selection to both Lightroom and Photoshop. And this works pretty good as you can see. Now of course I don't want to make the whole sky darker because that doesn't make sense on the right side where the sun is shining. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the right side like this. And only really the left sky is left for this mask. In here let's make it darker by bringing down the blacks. I also want to introduce some more contrast and then bring down the clarity quite a bit to make the clouds a little more puffy. Perfect. Then let's work on the shadows on the left side. Therefore, I'm just using a brush tool and I want to brush over the dark parts right here, just like that. I do want to make them a little darker, so let's bring down the exposure. And again, this will help to add some contrast to this image. Uh, in this case, we could add a bit of clarity in this area, giving the shadows some more detail. Just like that. Alright, and then let's work on the highlights of the mountain face. So again, I'm using a brush. And I'm just brushing over those bright parts. And I'm going to bring up the whites. Making those areas brighter and again helping with the contrast. Perfect. In this case, we could add a little bit of temperature. Making those mountain faces a little warmer and maybe some texture to get some sharpness in there. Perfect. That is it for the local adjustments. Usually after those adjustments you can already see a pretty big difference. I quite like how this image turns out. The contrast in the before was maybe a little stronger in the shadows, but at the moment we do have some very nice detail in here and I think the contrast is pretty good. But of course we can always change that in the last step with Photoshop. For now, however, for me the next thing will be the color grading. Depending on the image, I am starting with the curve tab. Depending on the scene, I'm starting with the tone curve. For sunsets, I usually go into the red channel and just play around with the point for the highlights. In this case, it doesn't really make the image look better, so I'm not going to touch it. Instead, I am heading into the color mixer tab. Usually I go through hue first, then adjust the saturation, then the luminance. For this image you can see we don't have that much color tones. We have some yellows, some blues and a little bit of greens down here. I personally don't like how the greens look. So I want to try and change that by bringing down the green hue. Also I could bring down the yellow hue just a little bit, giving them some more of an orange color tone. Then for the saturation. Let's bring down the yellow saturation, otherwise it might be too heavy for this image. At the same time I want to bring up the orange saturation just a bit. And then let's also bring down the blue saturation because that's the color right now which is kind of the most visible. And it's very distracting from the rest of the image. So just like this. Finally let's head into the luminance tab. Here I just want to further work on the blue tones, bringing them up. So the blue part of the sky just gets a little less attention. Alright, then we are done with the color mixer. Next up comes my favorite part, which is the split toning in the color grading panel. Usually on the split toning I am going really really crazy, especially on sunset images like this, because we can make quite a difference with those settings here. First off, I always start with the highlights and I want to make them a lot warmer. So let's bring up the hue and the saturation. 
And you can see it, especially in the bright part on the right side, we are adding a lot of colors here. So I actually want to bring down the hue a bit, giving them more orange tones. But I also want to bring down the saturation because right now it's a bit too much. So this is looking pretty good. After adjusting the highlights, I'm going for the shadows. Here, it doesn't really make much sense adding a warm color tone because this looks very, very strange, like an old image or something. I want to add a little bit of a cold color tone here. So you can see orange and blue works really, really well together. But of course, at this point, the saturation is way too much. So I'm going to drop it quite a bit, just so we have a nice balance of colors. Perfect. Of course, you could also adjust the midtones, giving them a warmer tone, for example. I'm not sure if I want to do it for this shot. Maybe a little yellow in here, but really not that much. Then, after the split toning, I often head into the calibration tab for some final color adjustments. At this point, let me just say this is probably not the right way to do it, but I just think I can improve the colors of my images this way. Usually I'm just playing around with the blue primary hue and saturation. So for sunset images again I'm usually dropping the hue. Which will give the blue sky a little more of an aqua color cast. And also will give the warmer color tones a stronger red color cast. At this point if I'm still not happy with the colors I can bring up the saturation some more to make them a little stronger. But this is looking very, very good. I quite like how this image looks. And at this point, we are done with the color grading, at least in the Camera Raw editor. The only thing that's left is the sharpening in the Detail tab. Here, yeah, I'm always using pretty much the same settings. I'm going to drop the radius all the way down, increase the detail all the way up. Then I'm holding down the Alt key and adjust the masking slider. So I only want the subject to get some sharpening just like that, and then I'm playing around with the sharpening itself. And I usually get pretty good results this way, looks really sharp already. And once that is done, we are going into the final step of the post-processing, which is the Photoshop adjustments. So let's open up this object. All right, the very first thing I'm doing in Photoshop is to get rid of objects or sensor spots or whatever. For that reason, I'm usually using the spot healing brush. I'm zooming in the image and just look for things like this spot right here. Can also get rid of this sunspot right there. Pretty easily done. Just look for distracting objects. This bright part right there might be a little distracting. By the way, to prevent sensor spots, it's a good idea to clean the sensor so there aren't any dust particles on it. I'm just a bit too lazy to do that, to be honest. But at that point, it looks pretty clean. Next, if the landscape does look strange, maybe because I was shooting it as a panoramic image, I do want to adjust that. Right now, let me drag down the guideline. You can see the mountains in the distance are a little bit skewed. Because, as I said, this, is, this was shot as a panoramic image. That's the next thing I want to fix. So I'm duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J, just in case I mess something up. Then I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation box, right click in here, and here I'm choosing Warp. To fix the skewed horizon, I'm just dragging around in this image, dragging those mountains up, as well on the right side. This way I'm just trying to get a straight horizon. I think that's good enough. So we can get rid of the guideline again. And you can see that's a pretty big difference to before. Now we can work on a few special effects. You might notice I like glow very, very much. In this case, let me apply some more glow. Therefore, I'm always using a new layer and I'm changing the blending mode of that layer to either soft light or hard light, depending on how strong this effect needs to be. In this case, I want to have a very subtle effect, so I'm going with soft light. Then pick up the brush by pressing B and make sure the hardness is set to zero and the opacity is set to around 10%. For the foreground color, I'm using something with a very subtle warm color cast like this. And then I'm just carefully painting over the bright spot, adding some subtle glow to this area. 
and the more you paint in, the heavier the glow gets. So that's looking really really good. I'm quite happy with this. So next up, let's apply some dodging. This is usually done with an overlay or a soft light layer. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light and I'm switching the foreground color to pure white. For the dodging and burning I usually use the TK panel plugin which is a paid plugin but it's very very helpful. And since I want to dodge the highlights I need to create a mask for the lights. For this image the lights 2 mask works pretty good and you can see I have it applied as a layer mask on our soft light layer. Then with the brush tool and the opacity set back to 100% I'm going to make a few areas brighter like the mountain phases in here and the foreground. So you can see this doesn't affect the foreground that much but we can change that by creating another layer. Again use the soft light blending mode this time going with the lights one mask which just has a brighter range and again let's brush over that foreground and back then the distance. If it's too heavy I'm going to drop the brush opacity and just keep painting in some more brightness. Just like that. Perfect and that's it for the dodging part. Then I usually do some more color adjustments. In this case let me try the photo filter adjustment layer right there which adds a little more warmth to the image. At this point it might be a little too heavy so let's bring down the opacity a bit. But that's looking pretty good. Along the way it makes sense to check out the histogram. You can see we are missing some black tones and we do have some overexposure. We could try to further adjust things using a curves adjustment layer, bringing down the shadows a little bit, while maybe raising the highlights for a simple S curve. To not lose too much shadows I'm bringing up the black point. This also helps with the faded look for the black tones, which looks pretty cool. At this point I am usually finished with editing, however sometimes I'd like to go through the Nick Collection plugin just to apply some more heavy effects. In this case I'm merging those layers by selecting them all and hitting Ctrl E. As many of you know this is very very destructive editing, but to be honest I don't really care since I'm pretty sure I want to keep the image this way. So with this layer I'm going to filter Nick Collection Color Effects Pro 4. In here depending on the image I use a different set of filters. For this shot we can use the skylight filter which will give us some stronger sunset colors. Uh, again this is a very strong filter so I suggest to use a rather low strength just like that. Maybe we do want to add another filter so let's click this button right there. Usually I'm going to add the brilliance warmth effect giving the whole image just a little more warmth here. And for sunset images like this a little glow works really good as well. So let's add one more filter and this time go with the glamour glow effect. Let's restore some saturation. Maybe bring down the glow a notch so we don't lose too much structure. But that is looking really really good. Let's apply it like that. And that is the whole process of me editing my raw images. So let me know what you think. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.